Hi everyone, it's Dr. A, and in this video we'll be describing the planes of motion along with their axes of rotation. And just to note, the entire reason behind discussing these planes of motion and their axes is so that we can better describe the direction in which various movements occur. First, we have the frontal plane, which is oftentimes referred to as the coronal plane. And this plane of motion divides the body into an anterior portion, referring to the front of the body, and a posterior portion, referring to the back of the body. And we can, of course, label these areas too. Next, we have the sagittal plane. And it's this plane of motion that is responsible for dividing the body into right and left portions. And it's important to remember that we need to refer to the right and left based on anatomical positioning. So this would be the individual's right side, and this of course would be their left side. Next is the transverse plane of motion, and it's responsible for dividing the body into superior and inferior portions. And just as we've done with the previous planes, we can label these areas as well. Now what we'll do is revisit those planes of motion and we'll list the osteokinematic movements that occur within each of these given planes of motion. First, within the frontal plane, we have movements such as abduction, adduction, ulnar deviation, radial deviation, and lateral flexion that take place. We can also add upward movement and downward movement. Within the sagittal plane of motion, we have movements such as flexion, extension, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, forward movement, and backwards movement. And lastly, we'll discuss the movements that emerge from the transverse plane, which includes internal rotation, external rotation, pronation, supination, eversion, inversion, and rotation to the left, and rotation to the right. So now that we have an understanding about how these planes divide the body, and now that we have a list of movements that take place within each plane, let's now look at the axes of rotation each of these planes have. And perhaps what will be most helpful for us is to define what an axis is. It is an imaginary line about which a body rotates. And perhaps what you're most familiar with is the fact that the Earth rotates on an axis. And while this isn't intended to be a study of the planets or solar system, what we want to pull from this is that all osteokinematic movements within the body have a rotational component to them. So let's take a look at each axis of rotation. In the frontal plane that we identified earlier, we said and now know that it divides the body into anterior and posterior portions. And what this means is that all of the osteokinematic movements we identified earlier that take place within this plane are possible because of some type of rotation around the plane's axis. And this axis, as is true for all axes, will run perpendicular to the plane itself. So for the frontal plane, we have what's called the anterior-posterior axis. In the sagittal plane that we identified earlier, we said that it divides the body into right and left portions. And what this means is that all of the osteokinematic movements we identified earlier that take place within this plane are possible because of some type of rotation around this plane's axis. And this axis, as is true for all axes, will run perpendicular to the plane itself. So, for the sagittal plane, we have what's called the medial lateral axis. And we call it this because it runs from the midline, or the medial portion of the body, towards the lateral sides of the body. And last, but certainly not least, we have the transverse plane. And in this plane, we said that it divides the body into superior and inferior portions. And again, what this means is that all of the osteokinematic movements we identified earlier that take place within this plane are possible because of some type of rotation 
around this plane's axis. And this axis, which is true for all axes, will run perpendicular to the plane itself. So for the transverse plane, we have what's called the longitudinal axis, which runs down the length of the body.